Is the Speak Design 6 liter sling bag going to solve all my problems by carrying both my camera gear and also my sketching gear? So tune in to find out. Hi, and I'm hoping you can actually hear me okay. I am here back again at Disneyland. I'm kind of on theme with my Simba hoodie. And uh, we're just here because I wanted to test out my little travel pack. And by travel pack, I mean um, this is my new uh, plein air art pack that my partner very kindly got me for Valentine's Day. Um, and what I mean by this pack is that if you're someone who films your art, you know that the camera gear, the tripod, the mic and everything, they will end up being more stuff than your actual art stuff. But at the same time, even though you want to be super lightweight, you don't you don't really want to um, kind of compromise your camera gear because you also want to have them in like a protected shell. So my partner thought that this Peak Design bag, um, it's a six liter sling camera bag and um, it's kind of big for me. Like if I put it up here against my torso, it like covers my whole body, but I've been enjoying it so far. Well, I use it for a couple of hours, but um, just the different modes of carrying just gives me a lot of options. I can also put it down. It also has like a lot for my tripod, which I think is really important. I do have a setup that allows me to bring two tripods and that is a lot of tripods and that works when I'm doing my full gouache sketch and all that. But actually in a couple of months, I'm going to be traveling and I don't think I'm going to bring my gouache or easel kit. I think that's just way too much. So what I'm going to do is actually make it as lightweight as possible and only bring watercolor and specifically my art toolkit. So I wanted to test out this setup and if it works, for example, like with stuff in this bag, um, I can pull out some stuff and show you what I have in a moment. But there are already like a few compromises that I know I have to make by making it super lightweight. And one of them is that I can't afford to have an easel. And so therefore I actually need to find a ground or like an area for me to paint on. And that's usually a table. So that's like the downside is I have to find a table because otherwise I am hand holding my sketchbook. And that's usually hard because if I'm going to shoot footage in real time or time lapse it, the footage tends to be like super unstable and super shaky and I can't just do jump cuts. Um, I don't know if you guys care for these details, but this is just uh, the stuff that I have to um, think about when I am shooting videos for uh, YouTube about my art. And uh, yeah, let's go through the stuff uh, really quickly and then we'll get on to the sketching portion. Right off the mat, I just want to say that um, I think the setup works. I will have to test it out again a few times to see if this is actually what I want um, in my trouble pack. But so far, I think I think this bag has hit it on the money. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a little preview of what is in my Peak Design bag. So we're starting off with the front pocket. This has hand sanitizer and also my wallet. And most importantly, my Disneyland gold card. So these are the important stuff that will live in the front pocket. Um, I know that it's kind of dangerous to have the wallet on the front pocket, but also these are not the easiest to open. So I'm fine with it being there. Um, if I'm really privy to it, I can put it in the back pocket, which you'll see in a bit. This is the top zipper. And actually it comes with a safety latch where I can zip these two all the way down there. And what I have to do is I can just literally loop this in here. It does take a little bit of work, which is the whole point, because now if someone wants to tug on the strings, they can't do that. Um, so that's a zipper. Let's stick to the outer part. This is kind of like some straps that they've specifically designed to latch onto these. It's, you can take it out by pulling it like so. So it just latches onto these um, straps right here. So this works for my tripod. I am using an Ulanzi and Komen F38 tripod. I am very much aware that this is a dupe of the Peak Design carbon fiber travel tripod. But at the same time, I do not have the funds yet to acquire that level of a tripod. So we are living with this dupe 
for now and so far it's been working great um okay pocket oh sorry at the back there is a slot for me to store kind of like the excesses of the strap and because i am a petite woman um a lot of the strap gets put down here but yes no other pockets at the back there is some straps on the side for me to um latch things onto but i don't have any yet so we are going to open this and see how my camera setup fits inside so the camera goes here on the right pocket and it's not here because you're on it i have the microphone the receiver of the microphone attached straight to the camera the other lap part is with me at the moment and the reason for that is like so that if i want to record i don't need to fumble and put the receiver on it's on there this is some snacks so the great thing about Disneyland Hong Kong being still controlled for COVID is that not all the restaurants are open and therefore we're allowed to bring our own food inside so that's what I have. It's my water bottle right here. Um, there is a side pocket right here and I am putting all like my drawing supplies in there. So this is where they live. Another option where I could put them is here. There is a Peak Design front pocket and this is where like my Insta360 GO 2 lives, for example. And then um, got an extra battery. I've also got house keys, orbit key, love those. Um, I've got magnets and nothing else on the side. And the reason for that, that and Band-Aid is that if I need to magnetize either my camera or my art toolkit somewhere, there is a pocket for it. And as you can see, if I want to, I can actually also slot all my pencils in here. But currently, I like that they live there so I can just pull it out. It's kind of like a standing pencil case. Moving on. These are Velcro straps, so I could literally attach it to the size of my camera so it doesn't shake. Um, this is my sketchbook. I can foresee, this is an A6 sketchbook, so I can foresee using like a bigger size sketchbook if I want to. And I can put it here. Because if I put it sideways, this would technically be an A5. There's still like a lot of room for the sketchbook to fit. So it is possible, but I do like the small size. Um, I've got some ND filters for my Insta360. Not super necessary, but I thought I would want to have it. Some tissues because you never need know how much you need while you're painting. Uh, my art toolkit pocket palette. So this right here is what I'm going to bring for my travels. I'll just fill it up to the brim and go from there and yeah this is my usual stuff nothing special in here just some tissues and also I have a JK there is something important here this is a mister for me to activate my watercolor paints as I'm sketching and yeah so so far and um, I think this setup works I think I will need to fiddle a little bit like I don't have a tripod for my phone and I was kind of missing that because I couldn't like capture footage of myself on the go. But then again, I have this camera, right? So I'm trying to force myself to use you right here. But yeah, so that is currently my setup. And now we're going to go sketch. I got lucky and was able to find this table and sort of this whole area of table to sit down. Um, I think one of the strategies that Hong Kong Disneyland at least is doing to kind of counter the effects or the cost of running a fully operational theme park is one, they don't open every day. So currently they only open five days a week. So they close every Tuesday and Thursday. Two is they don't run the fireworks every night because those are really expensive and they also have mentioned before that they encounter supply chain issues. So they only run fireworks, I believe, only on weekends and that's only Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday, but I'm not too sure. And then three, they don't open all of their restaurants and maybe it's their way of justifying um, the fact that there's not as many people coming into the parks as there was pre-COVID, at least not just yet. So they do a little bit of a rotation and even for the food stalls, 
they only open during like their busiest hours so probably between 12 noon to about 6 30 p.m right before dinner time because they're just assuming that people are gonna get dinner outside of the park uh because i wanted to go there and buy something at 7 p.m and they just weren't open so one of the few things that um is challenging Disneyland at the moment and I think might stay for quite a little while before we go back to 100% full magic. I have to admit that I didn't really draw um, everything in full proportion as in I didn't measure anything or take as much time to look at the proportions and make sure everything is accurately represented. What I did however is take a really good look at the subject before I started painting it. And the reason for that is because I'm very well aware that this dappled lighting sunlight situation that is happening is not going to stay on the merchandise cart for very long. And I just wanted to make sure that I absorb all those little details and get all those little nuances and see all the little um, bits and bobs like for example the flags and the flame on top of this card is actually rotating So I just wanted to make sure that I notice all of these details and spend some time Seeing and observing my subject before I actually put pencil on paper and also now paint on paper So while I was working with the constraints of this sketchbook Namely that I really uh, didn't have a lot of white space on the top, but I had too much on the bottom I did just try to make everything fit and I kind of made the shape a little bit of a square Whereas it's supposed to be like a horizontal rectangle But I wanted to make sure that it worked in isolation anyways See like one thing about the sketch is It's really rare that people are going to see your sketch and then realize that it's not an accurate copy of what you're actually drawing um, it's more likely that if something just works within your sketch, then it'll just work in its isolation. So I think that's why a lot of people, like when they are 70% done with their reference, they just stop looking at their reference and they just try to work things out um, in the sketch. And I think that's a really good philosophy to follow. Um, I have to admit it's not one that I followed in particular here because what I left till the very end is the details kind of like the shirts that were sold, the uh, monitor to record the transactions, the light sticks that they sold at the end. So because I thought those um, were important to the sketch because it is a merchandise card after all, I thought that this is what I needed to um, focus on and make sure I add at the end. Another thing that I try to actually do, and I think, quite honestly speaking, I think I failed at this, is I had to fight the urge to shorthand everything. And shorthand is not a bad thing, but I think it's good if you do it intentionally. Like for example, if I wanted to symbolize a t-shirt, I need to, um, like we all know what a t-shirt looks like, right? Like that model top-down view um, product photography where the sleeves are just like off to the sides in a 45 degree angle but in reality is when you find a t-shirt that's hung such as this one that's on the merchandise card right here the sleeves of the t-shirt aren't out in like a 45 degree angle they're just slumped down because of gravity and so you just really need to fight that very urge to make it into the symbol that you have in your head and instead just really focus on seeing and copying what you're seeing and representing what you're seeing instead of just having your brain kind of fool you and making you put down something that you think you're seeing but you're actually not seeing. So I had to fight that urge a lot here, especially because I kind of know the shape of all the merchandise. And another thing, apart from knowing the merchandise, uh, like I know what a t-shirt looks like in the cartoon version in my head, like in a 2D space. I know what a light stick looks like in a 2D space. I know what a doll looks like in a 2D space. But the other thing that's like really tripping me up is because I've never drawn a t-shirt before. Like I've never drawn dolls before. I might have drawn like a t-shirt once, um, anything like my laundry rack but it wasn't even like a t-shirt in its full form because I was just drawing it from the side so this is where um, drawing a lot and just building your image library is just so important I think when you're trying to represent objects that are around you the reality is you have to draw them really frequently because you can't just 
say something and then draw it perfectly without like the hours and hours and hours of practice and also just building off from what you have in your brain because your brain does need to process it a little bit before it is able to draw this and like for example the only reason why i'm able to draw that top dome of this card somewhat representatively is because i've drawn in disneyland a couple times before and i think a couple of months back i did draw sort of a disneyland not bungalow but like an arch dome kind of situation that's christmas looking and they had very similar colors like very similar local colors meaning the color that was actually slapped on and painted on the structure um the blue was kind of similar and i do remember that and all like the mickey shapes not that there were any mickey shapes here but because i already had one reference in my mind i was able to build off of that and notice what are the important bits and that's really just what i had to go off on i think building a library is important and also just observing, I think it's one way to counter the fact that you don't have that image in your library, in your brain library just yet. And also just getting out and sketching more. So doing things like this is really helpful. Um, I think what you want to do is you want to, if you have to have a fail sketch, is you just want to fail fast. Like you don't want to spend like three hours on a sketch when you can get like set, sort of that whole point of that image in your brain etched in in 20 minutes so the purpose here is not to sketch what you see on paper which is what you see here of course but also sketch that in your brain i know that's really confusing but i think it just reminds me of like when you ask some artists how long does it take for you to sketch um a painting sometimes they might say like oh it took me like 45 minutes sometimes they might also say oh it took me 20 years because that's the reality, right? It's like 20 years of knowledge of um, of building that image library for you to be able to sketch something out that looks the way you intended it to look and not just a happenstance, um, happy accident or not. Uh, now you just see me putting in the last details of this a sketch and i think we're gonna call it a wraps right here and go back to talking about the park and the bag and just my afternoon here That is going to be it for me today you guys thank you so much again for standing by for my adventure and also for um kind of sticking around as i figure out whether or not this bag is for you and you know if you have something similar let me know i know that there's always like this thing where we're just trying to look for like the perfect equipment like the perfect bag the perfect tool the perfect sketchbook and in the end i know it's trying to figure out something that works for you sometimes you gotta change yourself and sometimes you gotta change what you have and in this case um i did get very lucky because i didn't have to purchase this myself and someone else or someone who knows me really well made the decision for me but i just thought that if you happen to be looking for your perfect bag this might be one of the options if you're of similar height and build and you also have similar size camera equipment and sketch equipment all right well thanks again for dropping by and i'll catch you in the next one bye